pleasant uh, good morning to each and every one of you. May I say ladies and gentlemen, and if by chance there are boys and girls viewing, I say a pleasant uh, good morning to you. I trust that you are having a wonderful week thus far. I also trust that um, over the past weekend you would have made time to give God praise and thanks, you know, for keeping you through the previous week and, you know, asking him for his grace throughout this week. Today, I welcome you again to our next episode of Pastor's Corner. Yes, you heard it right. It's Pastor's Corner again. And I'm your host, Pastor Samora Bess, intern pastor in the Western 2 District of Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, if you're wondering where that is, that's on the west side of Grenada, Guav, um, Victoria, and Samaritan. I, I see beautiful sunset from the west side. But today it's not about the sunset. Uh, today we will be discussing church finance. Yes, a very interesting topic. We will be discussing a church finance today on Pastor's Corner. And of course, every Pastor's Corner, every Pastor's Corner, we have uh, some abled men and women who would sit in as panelists and, you know, share their wisdom their knowledge and important information with us so that we can be edified and well informed as it relates to various topics. But today, uh, it gives me great pleasure considering the topic that, you know, we would be discussing today. It gives me great pleasure to at least, you know, call upon a man of high esteem within the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He's a very busy man. And uh, he's so busy that today is his first time being on Pastor's Corner. That can tell you how busy is he is. And you would understand because of um, his responsibility. He, he has no time, really, because he has to make sure that all is well within the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm speaking about none other than the conference treasurer. Yes, the conference treasurer, Ella Anselm Joseph. A good morning to you, sir. How are you doing today? Good morning and thank you. And a pleasant good morning to all our viewers out there. I'm doing fine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we are happy to have you here at Pastor's Corner. As, as I said earlier, it's your first time. You know, feel relaxed. You know, don't be nervous. I know you're a man. You're well able to handle yourself. And we, we, we look forward to the information that you will be sharing to us today as it pertains to the church finance. We also have in studio with us an next important gentleman, very, very important man. You know, we always have important people here on Pastor's Corner. And today we have with us Pastor Edward Gilliam. And he's responsible for stewardship within the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists and Health. He's responsible for the stewardship department and the health department of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He's also the pastor of the South Central District of Seventh-day Adventists, which comprises of New Hampshire, Bolio, St. Paul's. All right, that's the churches that he, he pastor. And so he's also a very busy man. Um, he has been here before, but uh, again, we are privileged whenever he's here. Um, good morning to you. How are you doing, Pastor Pastor Guillaume? Good morning, Pastor Bess, and good morning to all our viewers and listeners. It's a great pleasure to be here to share with you. And I must say today, I am doing well by God's grace. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, viewers online today, today would be a very, very interesting day. And I want you to do me a favor. Call a friend. Uh, share the link. Tell someone that Pastor's Corner is on. And we will be discussing church finance Today. It's a very interesting topic. I know it's something that all of us would want to know. You know, what is happening when you give your offerings and your tithes and all these various things. And so today we would be discussing our church finances as we go forward. But before uh, we get into the discussion, I would like us to pause as we recognize the presence of Almighty God. And then I would recognize the presence of a few of the viewers online. And then we would get right on into today's beautiful topic, church finance. Let us bow our heads or 
May you adopt the most appropriate posture as we go before God's throne. Father in heaven, we come before you today in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for sparing our lives and for keeping us safe. Father, I pray that as we're about to begin today's discussion here in this episode of Pastor's Corner, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, dear Father, to be with each and every one of us. And may your Holy Spirit guide our thoughts and our mind. I pray that the Holy Spirit would also be with the two panelists here today. And that as we discuss, dear Lord, we would meet heaven's approval and all who are viewing including myself and even the presenters, we would, you know, leave here learning something new and being drawn closer to you, dear God. So into your hands, we place today's uh, Pastor's Corner session and we ask your blessings upon each and every one of us. Be with the internet, stable everything so that our viewers would be able to see. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. So once again, I say good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? In. All right. Fine. Nice, nice. I, I see online we have Alicia Stephen. Well, I understand that um, Dr. Lewis already made you an honorary Grenadian, so no need to worry. <laughs> I see rocks there, you know, saying good morning, pastors. We say good morning to all of our viewers online today. Uh, Brenda Noel is there. Um, Yvette is there. Um, Toffee, Toffee is there. Sister Rosalyn is there. Yes, we say good morning to all of our viewers online as we are about to begin this morning's topic, Church Finance um, of Pastor's Corner today. And so I would begin with this very, very important man. All right. Um, Ella Joseph, I would begin with you. All right. And then Pastor Guillaume, you would follow up accordingly. And so my first question is, how would you describe the church would you say it is a business entity or is it a non-profit organization? Well, generally speaking, I would say that the church is a non-profit organization. However, there are certain aspects of business community, business um, life where in the for-profit organization that are need to be applied in the functioning of the, of the, of the church. For example, the things like budgeting, financial planning. Um, we don't want um, any individual congregation or the church in itself undertaking a project without doing all the financial studies to ensure that you have sufficient funds to um, bring the project to its completion. So. Basically, I would say that it's a non-profit organization. However, there are aspects of the ordinary business for, for profit organization that we need to incorporate into our operations as well. All right. And just to add to what um, Brother Joseph mentioned, the church is also known as a faith-based organization or a charitable organization. So the church is not out to, to make money you know, to make money, or at the end of the year, the church looks back and say, look, we have made such and such amount. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about making money, but money is very, very important mm -hmm. to the church. The church cannot run without money. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, no organization that is set up, uh, whether it's a faith-based or non-governmental organization, or whether it's a governmental organization, cannot run without money, especially in these critical times that we are living in. So the church needs m finance in order for it to function, in order for it to spread the gospel far and wide. So, but let me say here, Pastor Bess, <laughs> that the, the real function of the church is about the spiritual growth mm -hmm. of its members. You see, there's a correlation between the spiritual growth and the financial growth of the church. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, when the spiritual growth, when the, mem the spirituality of the members are up there, the, the finances will rise. And this is what God encourages us to do. Mm -hmm. So, it must prioritize 
each member's spiritual growth. And this is one of the real functions of the, the church. As I said before, it's not about making money. So if the church fails mm -hmm. to help the member to grow spiritually, then the church becomes careless. Mm -hmm. Yeah? In its mission. Mm -hmm. So the, while the mission of the church matters, as I said before, the spiritual, the, the, the spiritual as well as the financial matters also correspond. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful response from both of you, a gentleman. Highlighting the fact that the church is not a, it's a non-profit organization. And we exist for the salvation of men. However, in carrying out its functions, you know, finances is important and necessary. Especially in these times to host programs and so forth. That would help persons to have a closer relationship uh, with Jesus. A wonderful response, men of God, you know, men of great wisdom. And so, um, Elder Joseph, uh, what, what, are, what are the major sources of funds for the church as an organization then? How does the church finance itself and so forth? What are the major sources? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you, Pastor. The major source of finance for the church is the tithes, mm -hmm. returning of the tithes, tithes offering, gifts, donations. These are the main sources of finance for the church. Um, there are other aspects, let's say something like the in-gathering, mm -hmm. you know, but the in-gathering is not really for get towards the uh, operation of the church as such. Mm -hmm. You know, probably later on down in the program we'll touch a little more on the in-gathering. Mm -hmm. But these are the main sources of finance for the, for the, for the church. We can also add here the church member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the church member. Yeah. Because um, how else can the church own finances? Mm -hmm. It's through us mm -hmm. as members. Mm -hmm. So anything our church plans mm -hmm. or anything that the church seeks to execute or audits begins with a church member. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Who returns tithes and offerings. And as Brother Joseph says, um, gifts into the church treasury. Mm -hmm. So, even institutions, Pastor Bess, mm -hmm. that are run by the church, mm -hmm. because the, the, it's not just about the church, you know, mm -hmm. but there are some institutions that are run by the church. So, we have homes, yes. we have schools. Yes, yes. They need money mm -hmm. to run those institutions. So, even institutions that are run by the church to some extent or in some way benefits from the, the, no the, the donations made by each church member, mm -hmm. you know, the offerings given by each member. So, of course, of course, our financial system is cared for and strengthened when every member understands. And I want to just emphasize this. Right, when yeah. every member understands his or her role within the church. You know, many a times you hear members complain that the church is asking for too much, but it's not the church. And I should make this point here, that we should not have the notion that we are just giving to the church, Correct. but we are giving back to God. Amen. Because it's an obligation that we have to God to return faithfully to him, because all that we have does not belong to us. Mm -hmm. It belongs to God. So the point I'm making here is that every church member needs to understand his or her role within the church and uh, faithfully, faithfully fulfill his or her role. But in doing so, they must remain spiritually connected and motivated to be a part of his or her church. Because, you know, there are persons who send their contribution or send their tithes or they send their offerings, but they are, they are spiritually disconnected to God. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to maintain mm -hmm. that obligation. But the point I'm making here is not just, not just about giving your tithe or giving your offering, mm -hmm. but you are spiritually disconnected from God. So while you give back to God, you must have that personal relationship with God as well. Amen. Amen. In, in other words, you're saying um, 
it 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 is it is connected connected right and we can fall into the trap of just giving without connecting with god but god wants both he wants us to give for his cause but on top of that he would also like us to be connected with him always and so it is important to know that as i look because um, go right ahead because pastor best a lot of a lot of our members mm -hmm. i've heard it for myself because they don't want to give they will say the greatest gift that we can give is ourselves mm -hmm. but do you know that when when god have us when we surrender ourselves to him god also have our pockets correct <laughs> he has true. our purses that's true yeah <laughs> he has all that we have mm -hmm. so we cannot say that we surrender all we give our lives to Christ because that's the greatest gift. But yet for all, we are withholding. So we, can, we can't say, I surrender all except my pocket. <laughs> no, we can't, we can't say that. <laughs> when we surrender all, we, we realize that um, it is God who blesses, right? It is God who has given us all that we have. And so in a loving response, we, we support the church. You know, we give a free will offer and we return tithes. And so forth. Wonderful, wonderful um, um, discussion. Of course, we do entertain um, questions from online and comments. I, I am seeing a couple uh, comments already. Sister Alicia is saying profound points, gentlemen. See, um, she's agreeing with you. I see hi everyone from from New York. That person is in New York. Um, Sister Alexander. I am seeing um, Brenda Noel saying agreed, gentlemen. Indeed, um, yes, we we. We entertain um, your questions and comments online. And so far, it seems like our viewers online, they, are, you know, they approve what has been said by you thus far. All right. And so as we move on nicely, you know, Pastor Guillaume, I, I know you, you're a man of God as um, Ella Joseph. But I, I made that statement because you are um, directly involved in, in shepherding the flock, right? You're a pastor. You manage churches. And so, um, is there a biblical theology for church financing? And of course, Ella, Ella, Joseph, you can give your comments as well. So, Pastor, um, I'll, I'll begin with you. Is there a biblical theology for church financing? If yes, please provide biblical support to, sus to substantiate your answer. Right, well, <laughs> to answer this, we must go back to the foundation. Mm -hmm. The foundation here um, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 and uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15, we see here just to um, summarize mm -hmm. that God here, he gave us dominion All right. over everything. Mm -hmm. Dominion here does not mean ownership, mm -hmm. but it means that we are managers. You will see here where God placed Adam in the garden. And uh, his responsibility was to, you know, to take care of the garden. Dress it and to keep dress it. dress it and keep it. Yeah. But the garden wasn't his. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have a responsibility. We must recognize that whatever we have does not belong to us. It belongs to, to God. So when we go over to Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8, it speaks to the point that God says that the silver... Mm -hmm. And the gold is mine. Mm -hmm. Right? The silver and gold is mine. As a matter of fact, he said in some part of the scripture, he said that um, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even ask you. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, think about it. God being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, don't have it, we don't have anything to, to give him. Mm -hmm. You Correct. know? Yeah. But he has everything that he has given to us. Mm -hmm. So, it means, therefore, that we must manage the little resources that God has given to us. Mm -hmm. In Psalm chapter 50, verse 10 to 12, it says that the cattle upon a thousand hills belong to him. Correct. Yeah? Correct. And then in Psalm 24, verse 1, it the says the, the earth is the Lord and, and the, the fullness thereof. thereof. Yeah. So nothing that we have, Pastor, really belongs to us. We are just managers. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we behave as though what we have and we try to hold everything mm -hmm. to ourselves and not return to God. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I want to zero in on Malachi chapter 3 mm -hmm. verse 8 
to 10. And I, 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 I don't know if here. you can read it for us. Yes, I, I, I'll read it. Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 10 says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. And verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You know, I just want to zero in on the word storehouse. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a lot of our members, mm -hmm. even members, you know, have a problem with the word storehouse. Okay. And uh, for some of us, we think the storehouse is the bank mm -hmm. or the storehouse is some other um, organization or entity mm -hmm. outside of the church. Mm -hmm. But when we go to the Bible, we will recognize that God has a storehouse for the wind. Mm -hmm. And we can see this in Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. God has a storehouse for the water. Okay. Go ahead. We can see that in Psalm chapter 33 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. God has a, snow, uh, a storehouse for snow and hail. Okay. I guess some people hearing this for the first time. You can Go take ahead. your notes. Take your notes mm -hmm. in Job chapter 38 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. So God has storehouses for all of these elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, of which he has total control. Mm -hmm. So follow me now. Mm -hmm. He has total control mm -hmm. over all of these two houses that I would have mentioned. We must bear in mind that God's most precious two house is the one involving tithe mm -hmm. and offerings. Mm -hmm. That's why he says in Numbers chapter 18 and verse 21, that's the New International Version, he says, I give to the Levites mm -hmm. all the tithes in Israel mm -hmm. as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of the meetings. That's only one example. Mm -hmm. But we have other examples in the Bible that speaks about the, the storehouse. So when we go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse mm -hmm. 5 and 6, the text says, But you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses. So the storehouse is a place where God chooses. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Chooses. There you shall take your tithes. And then in Numbers, what well, we read Numbers chapter 18 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. And there are other references in Nehemiah, you will see, you know, this, this storehouse was set up. So it's a designated place mm -hmm. where we have the responsibility to bring God's tithes and offerings and gifts. So where is the storehouse? Brother Anselm will answer that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the answer to that, this two hours is, is the greater conference. All right. Um, <laughs> Praise in, the Lord. In addition to Pastor G Guillaume, what Pastor G Guillaume gave, well, I think it was quite comprehensive. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing about this two hours, the tithes and the offering is the Lord. Now, the Lord will designate where this two hours is, That's and it's true. not left to the individual to designate where that particular storehouse that is. is true. Right? So, and in the case of ancient Israel, I think somewhere in Deuteronomy as well, mm -hmm. God mentioned that certain things, let's say, if you cannot get to the storehouse, because mm -hmm. remember in those days, yes. people own oxen, mm -hmm. cattle, and sheep and things. Yeah. So sometimes it might be kind of awkward to transport that to wherever the yes. warehouse is. Yes. And what God said, you, you sell it mm -hmm. and you, you, br you bring the money, yeah, which value, is easier yeah. to yeah, yeah. easier to do. Mm -hmm. So individuals don't have no authority whatsoever in determining where the warehouse is. Okay. In our case, the general conference designate the greater conference mm -hmm. as the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the church is God agency on earth. Correct. So that is true. <laughs> that is true. So let me just add here, um, Pastor, that mm -hmm. the highest governing body of the church is the church at a general conference session. Mm -hmm. That's the highest governing body. When the church members from all over the world can meet in one place and make decisions on behalf of the church, 
right? No. That's why we say that this church is not a one-man church. It's mm -hmm. not run by one man. The decisions are not made mm -hmm. by one man. But when the church meets at that level, the decisions that the church makes must be in harmony with the, what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. So anytime the church makes a decision that is contrary to what the Bible says and you cannot find it there, mm -hmm. then you don't need to follow. But once the church makes a decision, right, and it's in accordance with the will of God, with what the mm -hmm. Bible says, then we have to follow suit. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me share here that the, the world church has designated the conferences mm -hmm. as two houses on its behalf for the receiving, mm -hmm. not just the receiving, because some folks believe that the conference is about making money and they're only holding all the money here and, mm -hmm. they, and they say, oh, the church has all the money and they're not helping. Mm -hmm. But it's not about receiving, but it's also about the distribution of the tithe, all right? And even some of the percentage of the offering to meet the needs of the gospel ministry. Mm -hmm. So I want to just read a statement here from Ellen White. Um, I cannot, I don't have the quotation here, but you can, you can Google it. It says, but when in a general conference, the judgment of the brethren assembled mm -hmm. from all parts of the field is exercised, Private independence mm -hmm. and private judgment must not be stubbornly maintained, but surrendered. Mm -hmm. She says, never should a laborer regard as a virtue the persistent maintenance of his, of his position of independence, contrary to the decision of the general body. So when the church at that level makes a decision... Mm -hmm. To make the conferences, the storehouse, yeah, for the depositing of the funds, then what she's saying here that we should not stubbornly hold our position or conviction. Right. Once it's in accordance with the word of God, right. then we should follow suit. Amen. But Amen. there's another text, bro, um, Pastor, I just want to zero in on. Go ahead. It is, is Mark chapter 12, verse 41 Mark 12, to 41. 44, yeah. All right. Mark 12, 41 to and it says, and Jesus sat over against the treasury. All right. And so he notice, held. He said he, he sat close to the treasury. Yeah. <laughs> so you were sitting close to the treasury. You read that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Let, let me read treasury. it again. Let me read it so again. Read again Pastor. And it says, and Jesus sat over against the treasury. Uh -huh. And beheld how the people cast money so into the treasury. So he was observing. Treasury. He yes. was observing. And that was, that was in the church, eh? mm -hmm. observing how the people were putting into the treasury. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Continue. Mm -hmm. He says what? Right. And many that were rich cast in much. Uh -huh. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a fathing. And he called unto, his, unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Amen. For Amen. all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, Amen. even all her Amen. living. Amen. So she gave her best. Yes. She gave her last. Yes. And she gave her all. Amen. She gave her best, she gave her last, and she gave her all Amen. to the cause of God. Amen. Amen. As we move on nicely, <laughs> beautiful discussion, beautiful discussion. Uh, today, brethren, if you are just um, um, joining us, we are discussing church financing. I see um, the comments are coming in and they are very hot, you know. <laughs> Beautiful. Keep those comments coming in. Share, share your thoughts and so forth as we, as we come in. But I just want us to know um, we are discussing church financing, right? So um, let us keep that in mind even as we discuss or as we share our comments and so forth. And so um, my next question to you, uh, Ella Joseph. Uh, due to the fact that the church does not operate for profit, we establish that the church is a non-profit organization. Uh, do you think the church should be concerned with improving financial intake? If yes, please state why. Well, the, the answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as we said that we are operating in the, in the real world. Yes. A lot of the things that we need, what the church need to do to enhance its programs and projects and so forth, revolve around financing. Mm -hmm. um, as to the, the financial intake 
the more funds that the church have, have has available, mm -hmm. the more it will be able to impact on in the community where it operates. Mm -hmm. And also the way the, the greater will be it outreach to winning souls not only in the local field. For example, we are here now sitting in the in the media center mm -hmm. and folks all over the globe can hear us. Yeah. But those equipments are expensive. Uh -huh. Expensive to purchase, expensive to maintain, you know. Mm -hmm. So the, the the bottom line is that as we as long as we operated in the real world, we need finances in the church. And for example, when we had the um, the first lockdown of the COVID, mm -hmm. now the church finances plunged. Mm -hmm. The income, the intake plunged because the churches were closed. A lot of the brethren lost jobs and so mm -hmm. forth. But the opposite to that is that here now the demands for the social programs of the church was greater. Okay. Because we have to address now those who are unemployed. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the businesses shut down, mm -hmm. you know. So here again, finance, you cannot operate without finance in the real world. Okay. You need the finance to things. So the more finance the church have, the more it will be able to impact its members, its um, the community ways operate, and the programs which it put out, out there to so win souls for God. And you see, it's not about the church just getting money and not helping. Mm -hmm. Now, I think all of us, we like to see the church do more. Yes. We like to see the church do more. Yes. But if the church hands are tight because the church doesn't have the finances to help, then the church would not be in a position to help effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. So it means, therefore, that in order for us to help with the needs of especially those out there, as Brother um, Joseph mentioned, um, because of COVID, mm -hmm. a lot of folks are affected. Mm -hmm. You know, lost jobs, you know, reduced income, and so forth. The church will be in a better position to help. Mm -hmm. But I just want to make the point here that the church exists in a real world, mm -hmm. just like any other business mm -hmm. in a real world. And all the adverse effects that other business entities face, the church face as well. Correct. Right? So when it comes to things like COVID, when it comes to things like the war, the war that is existing now in Ukraine is affecting the church, you know? And um, you have the rise in inflation. Mm -hmm. it, it will affect the church. Mm -hmm. So we cannot operate, in other words, we cannot operate with a low intake mm -hmm. and uh, expect to meet the demands out there. So in, 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 in economy, they say that um, the greater the demand, the more should be the supply. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the demands of society is, is rising, but the church is operating down there with a low income, how could we meet the demands? So the supply, the intake, must be great so that we can meet the demands out there. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're moving on nicely. We're moving on nicely. And so, a lot has been said. A lot has been said thus far. And I just want to give our viewers a chance, and even uh, the men here, the panelists too, you know, as we, we, as we take in and as we, you know, ponder upon all that has been said. We will have a short break at this time where we would have a promotional video um, as it pertains to our upcoming evangelistic series. And so at this moment, we will take a break to come back. The Conference of Seventh-day Adventists presents the Bible Speaks Empowerment Series with international evangelist and motivational speaker, Pastor Marvin Smith. Join us for this life-changing series starting Saturday, 21st of May, and continuing nightly at Maribor Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Andrews. Come experience powerful preaching and practical solution to life's challenges from the Word of God. This dynamic series will also be streamed live at 7 p.m. nightly on Mission Life GND via YouTube and Facebook. Connect with us. It will be pure awesomeness. 
Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists presents the Bible Speaks Empowerment Series with international evangelist and motivational speaker, Pastor Marvin Smith. Join us for this life-changing series starting Saturday, 21st of May and continuing nightly at Maribor Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Andrews. Come experience powerful preaching and practical solution to life's challenges from the Word of God. This dynamic series will also be streamed live at 7 p.m. nightly on Mission Life GND via YouTube and Facebook. Connect with us. It will be pure awesomeness. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, um, viewers alike, whoever you are viewing today. You know, today we are, we are discussing a very, very interesting uh, topic. If you are just joining us, we are discussing church financing today. And of course, um, there are many uh, submissions in, in the chat and, you know, the discussions that, that are being held. Um, we are learning. And um, yes, th there's a lot of, you know, comments in the chat and so forth. Some I may not be able to, you know, address all or because of time and so forth. But nevertheless, we do encourage a submission. And as we go along, um, if we have the opportunity to address a question in the chat, or submission, we will uh, do so. And of course, I thank you for viewing and for continuing to view and for sharing your submission. Of course, if you are just joining us, we have uh, with us El Anselm Joseph. He's the treasurer of the Grenada Conference and Pastor Edward uh, Guillaume, also a pastor within the Grenada Conference, the stewardship and health director within the Grenada Conference as well. And we are continuing with the discussion as it relates to church financing. So, Ella Joseph, um, early in the year, at the f within the first quarter of the year, right, um, there is this program that the church promotes that is called the In Gathering Campaign. Can you explain this initiative and state how the funds collected are used? Okay, Th this, this initiative is pioneered by the Community Services Department of the, 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 the church, and it's a community outreach program. Now, they solicit funds from the community, and these funds are used to assist the church in handling its humanitarian aspects out there. Based on the, the funds collected, normally each church is set a target, what we call um, a target. So, and the, 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 based on the amount that they collect in excess of that particular target. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, let's say they collect, the, um, the target is $1,000, mm -hmm. and they collected $2,000. 90% of the amount in excess of the 1000 is returned to the individual church. Now, that, that money, that finance, is not used to finance church operation as such. But this 90% have to go back into the communities in which the, the churches collected those funds. Um, and there is a breakdown, there is a suggested breakdown as to how these funds should be distributed. 40% is recommended, it's suggested. 40% goes to education. 35% goes to welfare, 15% mm -hmm. goes to health, and 10% goes to disaster. Mm -hmm. So the individual congregation will use that as a guideline. Mm -hmm. However, I, I must add that, as I said, it's a suggested um, distribution. Yeah. But depending on the area in which the individual congregation operate, the church board, the management of the, in, 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 the um, congregation, yeah. can determine that we instead the greatest need in our area is probably health, mm -hmm. you know, and they can put more money into health and take it from one of the other suggested areas which we, which which I had mentioned. All right. So the um, that is basically the in gathering as it stands right now. And just to maybe reemphasize that the that money is goes back out into the go back out into the community. community. It is not used for church expenses. 
but it goes back out into the community. I just want to also say that it has a biblical base, biblical base. So in Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible says that God himself speaking, he says, the silver is mine and the gold mm -hmm. is mine. Mm -hmm. All right? So whether the, those monies are in the hands of members or non-members, they belong to God. Mm -hmm. So it's not ours. So God has, has um, encouraged us through his word in order for us to help those who are in need, those who are vulnerable. That's a way of soliciting funds or raising funds to help those persons. But it's not about going out there and just begging for money. Because a lot of us, we have the notion that when in gathering time comes around, we go going out there to beg. <laughs> it's not about begging for money. Mm -hmm. But we solicit funds, and while doing so, it's an opportunity that has been given to us to spread the everlasting gospel Amen. and to make persons know what the church is doing and the, church, the church's willingness to help those who are in need out there, mm -hmm. you know? So um, the resources not that are, a matter of fact, the resources are more outside the church than inside the church. You know? okay. So you have more of the resources outside. Mm -hmm. So where will we collect the monies? We have to go outside of the church to collect the resources so that we can help those who are in need um, among us. So it's an opportunity for us to spread the good news of salvation mm -hmm. and to tell men and women about the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. In addition, Pass, um, I want to go back to something which I had mentioned earlier when I gave the, the breakdown to the in gathering comeback. And I refer to the 90% um, of the overflow going mm -hmm. back to the local church. So, um, persons out there might, might be wondering what happened to the 10 mm -hmm. and then what happened to the basic. Mm -hmm. Because remember, I established there was a basic yes. and then in the 90% above the basic. Yeah. Now, these funds go to assist in the higher field, okay. in mission work, okay. in mission work in the higher field, where there are also needy persons out there, mm -hmm. you know, so that the, the higher organization can target those mission fields, build schools, hospitals, clinics, yeah. so forth and so forth. All right. So, so we all go back to the communities and to assist mankind in general. Okay, yeah. praise God. So in essence, all of the funds that, uh, that was collected, for example, in this year's uh, In Gathering campaign, it will be used back into the field. Now, I just want you to also um, speak just briefly, quickly, Ella, on the magazine that um, normally the ingatherers would have a magazine with pictures of persons given. You can you just touch as to the purpose for that? Yes. Um, the, well, it, it's a sort of a accountability process, mm -hmm. like so, so to speak, in that an individual give every year, and he will ha want to know well what really become of his funds. Yes. Because most likely, probably, that might not even be uh, a church member as such. Mm -hmm. yeah? But with the magazine, the magazine highlights certain aspects where these funds are um, distributed in communities, you know, to assist needy persons. You might see food hampers being distributed, health um, checks, and, and them kind of okay. situation where you might see even house repairs nice. in some instances, you know. All right. And those things are highlighted in the magazine. Thank you very yeah. much. As we move on nicely, as we, as we move on nicely, uh, are there any methods of fundraising, Ella Joseph, in which the church should not participate? And if so, can you list a few and explain, well, both yourself and Pastor Guillaume, um, you, can you list a few and explain the rationale? You don't have to list <laughs> all, you just list a few and explain the rationale. Well, it um, Pastor, you know that the um, <coughs> the Seventh Day Adventist Church, everything is its whole operation is Bible based. Correct. Yeah? Correct. Now there are certain other organizations, you know, that use that use um, different methods of raising funds. Some go into um, um, things like um, bingo. Mm -hmm. You know, some mm -hmm. have harvest. Mm -hmm. Some have raffles. Mm -hmm. We don't go into them kind of organization, into those kind of um, 
thing for raising funds. Mm-hmm. Some even have dances and, and so forth, you All know. Right. We don't go into them things because we know that it, this, those things is against the, the will of God. Mm-hmm. God. God don't intend us as a church organization, as his children, to indulge in those things for fundraising. So we do not go into those aspects. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I just I just want to share a statement here from the to back up what um brother Joseph mentioned here from Acts of the Apostles, page three three eight. Here's what um the servant of the Lord says. He says, As God's work extends, calls for help will come more and more frequently. If professing Christian would faithfully bring to God the tithes and offerings, his treasury would be full. Let me repeat that. Mm-hmm. His treasury would be full. There would then be no occasion to resort to fears, to, and that's F A I R S, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. Lotteries or parties of mm-hmm. pleasure. To secure funds for the support of the gospel. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful submission. Wonderful submission. I, I see a question online and I think um can we can Pastor Guillaume, can you just seek to um answer that? It comes from the question says, in terms of the ingathering, the surplus that goes back to the church, whose decision it is to choose who is helped? Is it the church board? Is it the church or church board? Well, I would say both. Because the church can refer persons to the church board. We can look at it. Um, It's important that we make an assessment. Because it's not about everybody just coming to the church and ask for money. Mm -hmm. So we must do a needs assessment Mm -hmm. to ensure that the person really needs help. But there are some situations that you know, it's 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 a given. So if if in the church community uh, a house burn, then the church is there. Mm-hmm. The church should, you know, lend a helping hand in whatever way possible. Mm-hmm. Um, someone needs some medical um, assistance, mm-hmm. then the church, because the church board is part of the church, mm-hmm. right? So we can decide whether or not we give. So it's not. It's not the church. A lot of people feel, you know, and, and there are some persons who, who get baptized and they come to the church because the church, they think that the church is wealthy. Mm-hmm. So they, they depend on the church mm-hmm. because they believe that the church could help. But when the church cannot come true for them, what do they do? They leave, mm-hmm. you know? But our sole responsibility is to have that personal relationship with God. With God. It doesn't mean that the church um, is, may not help, but the church would not be able to help everybody. All right. In addition, um, mm-hmm. Elder. Now, the church operating in a particular community, in a particular locality, mm-hmm. should know individuals in the community who need assistance. Yes. Yeah? If they d- do not know that, then we have a serious problem. Mm-hmm. Because you should be intertwined in, in the community, yeah. at least if the church is no longer there, mm-hmm. the community should the miss place. the church. Yes. You know? Amen. Amen. So, I, I don't think that should be much of a problem identifying who the needy persons are mm-hmm. and targeting the needy persons to give assistance. Wonderful. Correct. Wonderful. So, Pastor Guillaume, as a person in charge of the stewardship department within the Grenada Conference, what roles does stewardship play in church finances? That's specific to you, Pastor. Yeah, Pastor. Stewardship, first of all, stewardship is not something that is concocted by the church. Mm-hmm. It it has a biblical base, you know. It, it's it's biblical. Um, we see it in First Corinthians chapter four, verse one and two, mm-hmm. where the Bible encourages us to be faithful mm-hmm. to God. You know, faithful to God. But stewardship here um, encourages us to exercise our trust because whatever observe. Is that a lot of us, <laughs> Pastor? A lot of us, we we lose trust in God. We believe that God cannot supply all our needs mm-hmm. according to His riches in glory. Mm-hmm. So we lose that trust. So stewardship is about helping to rebuild that trust in God mm-hmm. and uh, our and to be faithful to God 
in all aspects of life. So it's not only in terms of returning our tithes and offerings, but in regards to our time or the use of our body temple, the taking care of the environment, mm -hmm. the mission of the church, you know, um, all of those things here um, play a part. And it also helps us to recognize our spiritual obligation mm -hmm. and accountability to God because one of these days all of us have to give God an account for well, stewardship, you know. And um, it encourages us to build a partnership, that partnership with God. And this is something that is oftentimes is lacking. That's why I said earlier, it's not about just returning our tithes and offerings alone, mm -hmm. but we must build that partnership, that relationship with God, um, who is the owner, and we being managers of his goods. But I just want to add here quickly that while we speak here about church finances, it doesn't mean that the church is not concerned about the personal finances of our members. Yeah. Because we would like to see our members prosper. Yeah. Because stewardship is about prosperity. Yeah. But we don't preach prosperity messages every time we come on Sabbath. You would not hear that. Mm -hmm. But stewardship is about prosperity. Mm -hmm. So we want our membership to be prosperous as well. Mm -hmm. So I see uh, one of the viewers, they asked something in, yeah. in relation to that. Mm -hmm. You know? So we have a responsibility as pastors, as leaders of the church, to empower our members, to help them mm -hmm. so that they personally can grow. They can grow mm -hmm. financially even as they grow spiritually. Amen. Amen. Wonderful arm um, submission. Uh, Ella Joseph, how does the church ensure the monies collected are efficiently managed and are there any auditing process as a form of oversight to ensure accountability? Well, the founders of the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church did a very good job in the accountability process. Mm -hmm. um, from the time that a member or someone, an individual, hand in an envelope to the treasury, whether it's a tight offering, the accountability process starts. Mm -hmm. Now, the member will indicate on that envelope what he intends to give for, tithes, offering, whatever, gifts. Now, it collected by the, the, the deacons. Then at the end of the, the service, the, a group of officers, the treasurer, the local church treasurer, the, an auditor, a local church auditor, and the deacon, they will go and check the money. However, the deacons can only check the loose offerings. Mm -hmm. The treasurer and the auditor will check, will open the envelope, and each of them will initial on that envelope mm -hmm. that the amount that they receive inside is correct. All right. They, it's recorded, and then it, it's um, packaged and mm -hmm. so forth for, for the banking process. Mm -hmm. Now, every year, each individual local congregation have to be audited. Mm -hmm. Each local congregation have to be audited. The auditor is a conference employee, mm -hmm. and he audit. He's supposed to audit every church every year. Mm -hmm. The report from that auditor goes back to the church, to the church board, and to the church clock. For that matter, the official copy is sent to the church clock. Mm -hmm. So it must be presented at the board. A copy is given to the pastor as well. Mm -hmm. And I think one, sometimes they give one to the first elder. Mm -hmm. Now, these things are supposed to be taken to the church board. And no, now the church has its um, business meeting, mm -hmm. uh, probably regular interval. Some churches have it every quarter mm -hmm. and so forth. So those reports are presented there. So members can ask questions, you know, of the treasurer, and the treasurer has to answer both at the church board level and at the general membership. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come up to the conference, the similar thing happens to the conference. The conference is audited every year, mm -hmm. this time by someone from the, the general conference mm -hmm. auditing service. We normally refer to them in our acronym as GCATS. Mm -hmm. So they audit the conference every year, mm -hmm. and they report as well to the, 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 the membership, to the, um, the executive committee, mm -hmm. and the general membership, so they report you that. Mm -hmm. And every member have a right to ask any question pertaining 
to the finances of the church, what put into the um, the auditor's report, and the the treasurer has to answer. Amen. So Amen. we are blessed with a, a, a fine system, um, accounting system so as well as church. Just a quick follow-up, Pastor yeah. Guillaume. I think you can answer that um, quick follow-up. Just a very quick follow-up. Um, you know, normally sometimes you would pass around or you would hear persons um, giving the suggestion that, you know, well, the pastors is like they, they could just take the church money and they buy a big van and they drive in. And so um, does the pastor have the, the free will to, to just dip his hands in the church funds whenever he pleases to do whatever he pleases? Mercy, mercy. Well, in <laughs> this case, pastor, to answer that question, the pastor at the local church has no... Um, he does not have any involvement, well, in terms of dipping his hands mm -hmm. in the church finances, mm -hmm. all right? He is able to monitor what is happening, mm -hmm. right? But as was mentioned, with a high level of transparency. Mm -hmm. So the church, the church is not a one-man church where, you know, he collects the money and all the money goes into his pocket. That doesn't happen. That's why we speak about the storehouse. Mm -hmm. So the monies go to the storehouse, and the pastors are given a salary, yeah. a salary, mm -hmm. and the pastors are expected mm -hmm. to manage that 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 salary mm -hmm. that is given. And may I say, it's not much. <laughs> Some folks feel as we get a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it's not much, and um, but we have to manage it. Mm -hmm. Because we must, as pastors, we have to exemplify proper stewardship to our members. So that if, when the members see us, they should see, yes, we are managing our, our little monies. And they themselves can follow our example. All right. So, Pastor Guillaume, while you're on the floor, um, can you, well, can you um, provide some support? At least two quotes or, or so uh, from Ellen G. White in regards to church financing. All right, just want to just highlight uh, two quotes here. Mm -hmm. One where she speaks about the value of money. Mm -hmm. Very interesting quote. She says, money has great value because it can do great work. In the hand of God's children, it is food for the hungry, mm -hmm. drink for the thirsty, and clothing for the naked. It is a defense for the oppressed and a means to help um, the sick. But money is of no more value than sand, mm -hmm. only as it is put to use in providing for the necessities of life, in blessing others and advancing the cause of God. This is Christ's object lesson, page 351. Mm -hmm. And I want to read the last one, where she speaks about God's plan for church finances. Mm -hmm. is based on the church member the church member. Very interesting quote. She says, the Lord does not propose to come to this world and lay down gold and silver for the advancement of his work. He supplies men with resources that by their gift and offerings they may keep his work advancing. The one purpose above all others for which God's gifts should be used is the sustaining of workers in the harvest field. And if men will become channels through which heaven's blessing can flow to others, the Lord will keep the channel supplied. It is not returning to the Lord his own that makes men poor. She says, without, um, she says withholding tends to poverty. All right. And this is from Christian Stewardship, please, page 36. All right, thank you very much. You know, um, it is said, you know, um, on this side of life, meaning here on earth right now, you know, when you're having a good time, it must come to an end. Mm -hmm. And to bring the curtains down, I have one final question, and this question would go specific to uh, Ella Joseph, right? Um, do you encourage online giving? And is it a safe and secure way to donate to, the, to church activities? Well, to the first part of the question, yes, I encourage online giving. And the second part, yes, it's a safe way to give to the church. Now, um, online we'll be having the, a link which viewers can click on. Mm -hmm. And then it will take them to uh, a web page 
where they can give. It's straightforward, fa fairly straightforward once you click on the link. Now, when you give online, the, the, the system we have that as you give, the system gives you an electronic copy of the receipt. At the same time, when it gives you that electronic copy of the receipt, it also sends a notification mm -hmm. to the treasurer, to myself. So I will see pop up in my email that you know they receive such and such. Mm -hmm. And if I want the details, mm -hmm. then I will click and, and get the details. Okay. From, well, it come from Pastor Guillaume, okay. $300 for tithes and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then I can go view my account. Just as any online bank statement, I can call it up and see all who donated to the, the, um, the cause. Plus, the system we're operating from is from um, uh, an organization in St. Kitts. I have a lot of confidence in the guy speaking with him before we set up that system. He is one of us, uh, seven day, one of the managers, the top managers is one of the Seventh-day Adventist church. And addition, he has extensive um, experience because he was uh, one of the senior managers in the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Mm -hmm. If we have any problem whatsoever, there is a, a page in that online account where we can report mm -hmm. to the organization, letting them know that the challenges that we have, you know, if there is a fault in the system, and they will get back to you, mm -hmm. you know, and they will address the cause. So I have full confidence in that system. All right. And, of course, um, if you're wondering how you can do that, as um, Ella Joseph said, there's a link that is normally posted, or um, there's what, what we call a QR code, right, where you can use your phone and scan it, and it takes you directly to that page as well, and you would be able to give your contribution in that secure online portal so have no fear um of course we know our greatest security comes in god and um we we trust that god will take care of his church and his people um i just would like to say thanks to both uh pastor guillaume and Ella joseph for taking the time to be here today to um have this beautiful discussion on church financing i also take the time to Say thanks to all of our viewers for your submission and questions that were posted in the chat online. Unfortunately, we were not able to attend uh, to the majority of the questions, but we still give thanks for your submission. And um, we do encourage you to, uh, if you know someone who would have missed this morning into afternoon's program, you can tell them about the rebroadcast at 8 p.m. this evening. So, brethren and friends, we thank you. And, um, of course, we remind you that coming or beginning, rather, on the 21st of May, right, which is Saturday, uh, is our Hope Beyond the Bible Speaks Evangelistic Series. Um, the link will be sent out. Um, persons, you need to register your guests and so forth. Um, you can view it on Mission Live on a nightly basis. And so I thank you again, gentlemen. I thank no you, problem. viewers, uh, for, you know, taking the time to view this afternoon. Um, of course, we do invite everyone to, you know, like and subscribe to the page so you can get notifications as to the different services of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And on this note, I invite us to bow our heads as we pause for a word of prayer. And I would ask Ella Joseph, can you do that closing prayer as we end today's uh, Pastor's Corner? Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for the session that we had. We thank you, Lord, for your, the privilege to serve at this level of your organization. We thank you for your church, which is your agency here or not. Lord, we ask your forgiveness wherever we have failed you and come short of your glory. Father, we pray and ask that the discourse, the discussion that we had here, that it will act as a means of um, educating and informing our members out there and the general public, the viewers, and help, Lord, that as you continue to bless your church, help, Lord, that we'll continue to put all those programs out there and help that our church will grow stronger. And at the end, we'll be able to fulfill and accomplish your mission in this side of the vineyard. So into your hands, Father, we commit this entire program. Into your hands, we commit the media center. Into your hands, we commit the Greener Conference. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless it. And when you come, Lord, a place we ask in your everlasting kingdom is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.